In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth, fiat. Okay, does that sound better? Paul. Oh. Okay. Let's try again. All righty. Okay, so, yeah, we're going to try to start right on time, okay? So uh, now we're going to have Mass shortly in an hour. We're going to have Rosary. So uh, if you're eating anything, wolf it down real quick so we can have an hour of fasting. Okay, so uh, volume 14, November 24th, 1922. What would you, Louisa, say of the sun if after I gave it so much light and heat, it would not want to give this light and heat descend and descend upon the earth? Would you not say to the sun, it is true that you make a good impression, but it is not good that you keep it for yourself. The earth, the plants, the generations await your light and your heat. They want them in order to receive life and fecundity. Why do you want to deprive us of such a great good? Moreover, since in giving them to us, you lose nothing. Rather, you acquire more glory, and everyone will bless you. So here's Jesus saying this to Louisa, because Louisa says, I'm nobody. I'm nothing. Okay. So, uh, thanks. Uh, so what's very important is that... Um, uh, the, the, the 36 volumes are about Louisa Picaretta. They're not about us. And that's one of the difficulties that I've seen. As a lot of people, when they read, they say, when it says you, they say, well, it's me. God's talking about me. And it's not true. These 36 volumes are about Louisa Picaretta and the souls who are linked to Louisa. This, is, this will be our job to do, to learn from Louisa, to link ourselves to Louisa so that the kingdom can be established. So, uh, again, Louisa never believed. Like, I remember one point when Jesus says, there is one soul who is living in the divine will, who is giving life and light to everyone and everything. And Louisa says, tell me who that is so I can thank them. And Jesus says, it's you, Louisa. And she goes, you've got to be kidding. I'm nobody. I'm nothing. That's why God loved her so much. He, she never thought of anything. Now, when we get a locution or an apparition or a vision, man, we publish it. <laughs> God said this to me the other day. I mean, Louisa never, she, she just wanted to be remain, remain hidden. That's, that's little Louisa, such a beautiful soul. <clears throat> 
Such are you, Louisa, and even more than son. I have placed in you, Louisa, so much light and truth about my divine will that more than son, it would be enough to illuminate everyone and to do more good than the son itself does to the earth. I myself, Jesus says, and the generations await that this light be unleashed from you, Louisa, while you, Louisa, think of how to hide it. And you, Louisa, almost afflict yourself if authoritative people want to occupy themselves with putting it out. No, no, this is not good. You have to remember that Louisa was greatly persecuted, uh, like St. Faustina, uh, greatly persecuted, uh, like most of the saints. Uh, St. Saint Francis was kicked out of his community. St. John of the Cross was kicked out of his community. It seems like if you're not kicked out of a community, a guy doesn't want to use you. So... Volume 16, 10, uh, October 30th, 1923. The one Louisa who lives in my divine will must fully expose, be fully exposed to the rays of the burning and eternal sun in order to live of light, to see nothing but light, and to touch nothing but light. This leads to deatification of the soul. That's exactly what St. Peter talks about in his epistle. The deification. See, God wants to deify us. Why do we receive Holy Communion? So that we can continue to live human lives? No. God wants us to live a divine life. We receive Holy Communion. This is the great thing about uh, our church. Uh, We we participate in God. We we are in communion. That's why right after after receiving Holy Communion, the Mass ends. Because the church does not want to interfere with our communion. Yet what has happened over the past 40, 50 years is now we have fellowship. No, there's, there's no communion with God. We have to teach ourselves. And, and after Matt, we're going to have the Latin Mass today. Um, and uh, once we're done, you go to page 62, prayers a- after Mass, the prayers of Thanksgiving, prayers after Holy Communion. We have to discipline ourselves to Enter into that communion with God for that 15 minutes until the host is dissolved. Jesus is physically there in a mystical way. This is the time when we pray. It's the most efficacious times of prayer is is when we receive Holy Communion. Anything, everything. God says, what do you need? What do you want? How can I console you? Who who are you praying for? The Lord wants... To, to to help us. And so, you know, after receiving all the communion, we, we're, we are sharing in divinity. God is beginning this deification, not deification, deifying us. He wants us to participate in him. He wants us to uh, 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 begin to live heaven on earth. See, if we receive Holy Communion to participate in that perennial communion that we're going to possess in eternity how glorious this is so but but we have to discipline ourselves we have to know this and then work for it only then can one say that the soul louisa lives in my divine will when she remains all deified in god and that's for us too not to lose that communion with god that's why throughout the day, when we make our spiritual communions, I mean, we should make spiritual communions throughout the whole day. Every hour on the hour. You know, just stop for a second. I want to receive you, Jesus, uh, spiritually. And, and again, what, it's, what did Jesus say to St. Uh, Gertrude? That uh, a spiritual communion is in a silver chalice, uh, a silver ciborium. A, 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 a regular communion, a holy communion, uh, is in a gold, gold ciborium. And both are, both are pleasing to me, Jesus says. So, I mean, we can receive spiritual communion throughout the day. See, so you're beginning, the church is already teaching us to get in, in communion with God throughout the day. Even more, coming out from under the tree and stroll in the celestial Eden of my divine will. And, and again, like I said to you before, we have to begin to hear and see the I love yous of God all around us. And so, gazing at you, Louisa, thoroughly, and the sun may convert you, Louisa, into light and may give you, Louisa, the final touch of your deatification in God. Volume 17, September 17, 1924. My daughter, Louisa, do you see how beautiful the sun is of my holy divine will? What power, what marvel. 
as soon as the soul wants to fuse herself in the sun to embrace in the divine will, to embrace everyone, my divine will turning into sun wounds the soul and forms another sun within her. And as she, Louisa, form, performs her acts, these become rays, again, from the, the, this is like the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the hands from Our Lady, the, the Immaculate Medal, which wound the Son of the Supreme Will. And overwhelming with it, within this light, Louisa loves, glorifies, satisfies her Creator for every soul. What is more, with not human love, not human glory, not human satisfaction, but with divine love, divine glory and of the divine will, because the son of my will has worked in Louisa. Do you see, Louisa, what it means to do acts in my divine will? This is to live in my divine will. The son of my divine will, transforming the human into son, acts in it as if it were its, as if it was its own center. So here, uh, again, we are we are called to. Enter into God again, to go back to God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. We are called now to return to God in, in the manner in which he originally planned. Not just humanly. We See, this. What, what God wants us to do is to share in divinity. We become that drop of water entering into that chalice filled with wine. Again, it, this is not for everybody. Most people won't, do not want this. The reason is because they have holy things in mind. They have saintly things in mind. They have good things in mind. And they can't put that down. That's why Jesus says to Louisa, you have to give up everything, even holy things. And when you hear that at first, you go, well, what does that mean? We're going to do bad things? No. God wants us to do divine things. It's, it's more that God wants us to do. Not just to be good and holy and saintly, but more Volume 20, November 27th, 1926. All, the li- all of my life lies within you, Louisa, Jesus says. Why? To form the foundation. Therefore, it is not befitting that your little work over this foundation, so solidly and so wholly, be done with distraction. Now, it's the same thing with us. God, God is asking us to enter into this apostolate of apostles, apostolates, to... Um, not do this, as, as it says here, with distraction. Don't be distractions by the things of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Be absorbed in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, uh, distractions so that your rounds in the supreme will are done as shaded. No, no. My, Louise, my daughter Louisa, I, Jesus, do not, do not want this in you. Do not fear. You, Louisa, will remain buried in the Son as she went of my divine will. Who, more than the divine, the divine will, will be able to eclipse you, Louisa, in such a way that no one may notice you, Louisa? The son of the supreme fiat will have great care so that as the little lamp of your soul, Louisa, is surrounded by the divine rays of the sun, the sun may appear in it and while keeping the lamp hidden within itself. So, uh, again, uh, Louisa was never known. I mean, she was known in, in her town of Corrado as Luisa La Santa, the saint. And, and, you know, there were many people that were raised from the dead because of Luisa. Yet she was known, little known, in, in, in Rome. Uh, now they're getting to know her. And they're astonished. Who is this Luisa Picaretta? And it's the same thing with us. The more I read, I've been reading now for, what, 26 years. And uh, I'm astonished by Luisa. Who is this Luisa Picaretta? And I heard about it 36 years ago, and I was I was I was flabbergasted then. But to read, it's just this is astonishing, and that's the thing. Do not stop reading. Jesus says this is a food that you are nourished on, and as we read this, as we uh, you know, we read sacred scripture, we do our breviary, we we follow the 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 teachings of the church, the dogma and doctrine of our faith. Uh, this book of heaven, and this is really beautiful. The statue here, it's our, our Lady is pointing to this book, and Jesus is pointing to this book. And I just think it's kind of neat that Jesus says to Saint Annabel, he, "This is this is the stall." When I went to his canonization, he was Louisa's spiritual director. Uh, Jesus says that the, this is called the book of heaven, uh, the, the the 36 volumes. And uh, you see very clear, and, and the Pope put uh, St. Annabel de Francia in charge of vocations. So if you want vocations, you pray 
uh, to St. Annabel. This is what the Pope has asked. Uh, and, and again, he is the one, um, the harvest. The Lord, he, he says, pray to the Lord of the harvest for priests. And uh, like I said before, this second Pentecost is going to come at the fulfillment of the harvest. Uh, uh, the Jewish feasts, we have uh, Hanukkah and we have Christmas. We have uh, Passover, we have Holy Week, we have Easter, we have uh, Pentecost and they have Pentecost. Um, they have the Feast of Booze, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Succoth. The, the, this, this is the uh, Feast of Harvest, if you want to say. And we don't have that yet in the Catholic Church. This, this is what's coming. Uh, if you go to Israel, we were, at, we were in Israel went during the Feast of Succoth, the Feast of Booth, the Feast of Tabernacles. And everyone, it's, it's eight days of dancing in the streets, literally dancing in the streets. It's a time of joy. It's a time of celebration. It's a time of harvest. That's going to be in the Catholic Church as well. That's the feast that's coming. The feast that we, we don't know about. Uh, how glorious this is to, to uh, recognize that this fire from heaven, symbolized by the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, is coming upon the earth. How glorious this is going to be. Uh, Volume 20, uh, December 8, 1926. By living out, living in our fiat, the soul Louisa does nothing and then imitate her creator, the eternal son, and concentrates all of her reflections upon her, all of its reflections upon her, in such a way that she, Louisa, becomes the little son in the likeness of the divine son. Was this not precisely our purpose of our saying, let us make man in our image and likeness? Therefore, my daughter Louisa, let your flight in my divine will be continuous, that it may concentrate it rays, its rays upon you, Louisa, darting through you, Louisa. May it make of you, Louisa, its little son. I mean, the son, this, this, the true image of Jesus transfigured on Mount Tabor, the true image of, of Our Lady clothed in the sun at Guadalupe. Now we, they have a little daughter clothed in the sun. The, the, uh, again, God wants to clothe us in divinity. He doesn't want us naked anymore. He wants us entering into the fullness of light, the fullness of life, the fullness of love, which Jesus says is the divine will. Volume 20, December 22nd, 1926. Now who will be able to resist the light of my eternal fiat? Of its knowledges will be more than rays of light of my volition that will beat down on the surface of the earth and penetrate into hearts and will bring the good that the light of my divine will contains and can do. I, who's going to do this? However, these rays must have their sphere in which to start. They must be centered in one single point from which will arise in order to form the dawn, the day, the afternoon, and the sunset within hearts and then to rise again. The sphere, the single point, is you, Louisa. The rays are centered... In, that are in my knowledges that will give fecundity to the generations of the children of the kingdom of my divine will. This is why I, Jesus, always repeat to you, Louisa, be attentive. It's the same thing to us. Be attentive to what God is doing. Don't live with your eyes closed anymore. Don't live not looking and seeing what's all around you. Jesus says very clearly, this is why I, Jesus, always repeat to you, Louisa, be attentive. So then not one of my knowledges be, may be lost. You, Louisa, will cause a ray to be lost from within your sphere. And you, Louisa, cannot even comprehend all the good it contains because each ray contains its own specialty of a good that it must do to the children of my divine will. And you, Louisa, would deprive me of the glory of the good for my children and would deprive yourself also of the glory of spreading one more ray of light from your sphere. So Jesus says, I've centered this as, as he centered in Francis, Franciscan life, as he centered in St. Dominic, the Dominican life, as he centered with St. Benedict, the Benedictine life. What he, Jesus is doing is he's centering the divine will in Louisa. Uh, again, that's why, see, this is not religious. This is not good. This is not holy. It's more than that. And when people hear this, they go, What's better than good and holy and saintly? <laughs> it's divine. God wants us to enter into this. Now, no one possesses a, a, this at this point, only Louisa. 
The first one, Jesus says, who will possess this gift will be the Holy Father. Because you, you need a man and a woman. Adam and Eve started the human generation. Jesus and Mary started the, 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 the Catholic the, uh, the, the Catholic life, uh, the supernatural life, the, uh, uh, the life that Adam lost again. And now Jesus is saying, I, I, I want divine life. So you need the Pope. He, he represents all of sacred scripture. He represents all of the dogma and doctrine of the church. Adam knew all that. Adam didn't have to be taught. We, we, have to, we have to study it. Okay, and then he gives the second part, the book of heaven. So the two coming together, and this is why right now in the Vatican they're studying this. When the two come together, it's a whole new beginning for the world. Everyone will become Catholic. And, and it's not the, ca- ca- the Catholic that we've seen lately. It's, it's the Catholic life, the universal life that God breathed into Adam. The Catholic life, the universal life that Jesus and Mary possessed. See, there's so much more that's coming. It's not just, I mean, somebody says, I'm a good Catholic, I go to church on Sunday. Well, you're doing the minimal requirement of a Catholic. You're a minimalist. You go to church on Sunday. God bless you. That's why I pray the rosary. I wear the scapular. Well, Our Lady told us to do that. You got your 15 minutes in. Now you got the rest of the day to do what you want. That's minimal. See, the, the, the Catholic life is, is to breathe God. The Catholic life is to have God uh, beating in our heart, beating. It, it, the, it, it, the miracles are supposed to uh, abound with us. And, and Jesus says to his apostles when they said, you know, give us faith. He says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move, and it has to move. That's a divine act. You could say to the sycamore tree, be uprooted and cast, cast into the sea, and it must obey you. That is a divine act. When Peter was walking on the water and sank, Jesus didn't say, good job, you walked uh, five steps and you sank. He says, why did you falter? Why did you fail? A divine act that Jesus wanted. When Peter said, when, when Philip said, who's going to feed these people? Jesus said, you feed them. Peter says, I have, Philip says, how can I do that? Not even, even 200 days wages can I feed all these people. Jesus expected Philip to do a divine act. And then what does he say to the, the apostles? How long do I have to endure you? How long do I have to be around you? These were the first saints of the day. Because as Jesus tells Louisa, I want more than just sanctity. To be in the image and likeness of God. See, we've received the image of God at baptism. God now wants to give us through the sanctification the likeness of God. This is what it means to be Catholic. That's why those that don't follow the Catholic faith or minimize the Catholic faith, God isn't too pleased with them. The Catholic faith is the universal life that God breathed into Adam. Our responsibility is to be faithful and obedient Catholics. Not to compromise one iota of the faith. And we have a a big responsibility uh, this coming election. Either we elect someone pro-life or we elect someone who's pro-death. It's very clear. The Catholics did the wrong thing the last time, 54%. Every abortion that happened since then, that the people who voted for that man, is on the conscience of every Catholic who voted for him. You are culpable for every abortion. Worldwide. That's why Jesus says, I had to purify the earth. That's just, we're talking about abortions. We're not talking about anything else that's happening. Our, our responsibility as Catholics is to change the world. And uh, at this point, we're not, doing, we're not doing a good job. So Jesus has gone down to the, the remnant of the remnants. 
And he says, you've, you've, you've got to do more. Because if you don't do more, everything's going to go up. And the fire that comes down is going to be a consuming fire that will destroy everything that is not of God. So our job is to help not only our families, not only our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, our parishioners, but to help all human generations embrace God. How can you do that? See, we, the, the saints have said very clearly, we are trapped in time and in space. That's where we are. We're trapped in time and in space. St. Thomas Aquinas teaches us that if we really looked at reality, we would see that we are in the throne of God, around the throne of God, in heaven, eternally blessed. But in time, we're here. In space, we're here. So the Lord is asking us, in time, in space, trapped to now pray for everyone and everything. As a matter of fact, the church teaches this. When you are in front of the Blessed Sacrament alone, you represent all mankind. Not only your family, but all mankind. And as a soul in front of the Blessed Sacrament, you can just say to the Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us. We, we fall on our knees to adore you, God. It's not just you. It's not just your knees. You kneel for everyone. You look at God in the Blessed Sacrament with love for everyone, in the name of everyone and everything. To return that, reciprocate that, that I love you back to God. And see, God now wants more. He wants us to do more. And, and so therefore, he's given us this gift of the, of the divine will through the Wisa so that we can participate more in God. Volume 20, December 29, 1926. My G sweet Jesus on coming made himself seem carrying a son in the center of his breast and holding it very tightly in his arms. And drawing near me, he, Jesus, took that son from the center of his breast with his hands and placed it in the center of mine. And then he took my hands in his and he crossed them very tightly over the son, saying to me, this son is my divine will. Hold it tightly. Let it, never let it escape you, Louisa. For it has the power to convert you, Louisa, and to form all your acts, everything into light in such a way as to incorporate you completely in it, forming one single son. That's, that's what the priest prays every day at Holy Mass, putting the drop of water into the chalice filled with wine. May we share in the divinity of Christ as he humbled himself to share in our humanity. He started this with Louisa. She's the firstborn, Jesus calls her, the newborn of the divine will. And now he's asking us, do you want to participate in this light? Do you want to participate in this life? Do you want to participate in this love? And all our response is fiat. Let it be done to me as you say. That's, our, that's, that's what God is asking of us. Volume 20, February 6th, 1927. My daughter Louisa, for the one Louisa who possesses my will, it is as if she had had the center, the sun centered within herself, but not the sun that can be seen up there in the heavens. Rather, the divine sun, the very sun that is centered in God, extended its rays, its center itself in the soul of Louisa. So, and so Louisa, the owner of the light, because Louisa possesses within herself the light of the light, the life of the light, and all the goods and all the effects that it contains. Therefore, Louisa enjoys the communion of the goods of her creator. Again, entering into that perennial communion with God. Everything is in common with the one Louisa who possesses my divine will. Common is the love. Common is the sanctity. Common, common is the light. Everything is in common with Louisa. Even more since her creator looks at Louisa as a birth from his divine will. Louisa is already his daughter. Louisa, so Jesus enjoys, loves, and wants that his goods be in common with Louisa. Again, that's just what God did with Adam. He gave everything to Adam. You were in charge. You were king of the earth. And then Adam lost everything. So he, he, who comes as king as Christ comes as king? Our lady comes as the queen of heaven and earth. Why? To, again, share in common the gifts that God has given to Adam, which Adam lost. And now, Jesus is saying, now I have a human who possesses this. 
Not St. Francis, not St. Clair, not St. Teresa, not St. Benedict, not St. Dominic, Louisa. She's the one, Jesus says, that I'm beginning the second generation of the children of light. How astonishing is this? Who is this Louisa Picaretta? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can't get over Who is she that God would begin where Adam left off? And that's why he says, he says that to Louisa. You are, you are beginning where Adam stopped. And, and our job to reciprocate this love back to God, to return this love back to God, Jesus says it's going to look as if Adam never sinned. What does that mean? Everything's going to be repaired from this moment all the way to the fall of Adam. Everything's going to be repaired. It's going to be redone. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful Catholics. Enkindle in us the fire of your love. Uh, I forgot the rest. <laughs> yeah, thank you. See what happens. But see, don't open your eyes. You open your eyes and everything goes crazy. Um, you renew the, the whole face of the earth is going to be renewed. And this is this is what God has planned. Everything's going to change. How? The devil is going to look and see that he was a total and complete failure. Everything that he did, everything that he did to humanity has been restored, renewed. It's the story of Job. Everything's going to be repaired. God's got such great plans for mankind. And he's going to prove to the devil that he, he could not do what he said he planned to do. Destroy God and destroy God's ch- children. <clears throat> okay, did, did we start 20? Daughter possesses the will if she had the son in the center of herself. Did I, we do that? I'm telling you, when my mind goes, I just can't. I have no idea where I am. Therefore, okay, thank you. <clears throat> Therefore, Louisa enjoys the communion of the goods of her creator. Everything is in common with the one Louisa who possesses my holy divine will. Common is the divine love. Common is the divine sanctity. Common is the divine light. Everything is in common with Louisa. Even more since God, her creator, looks at Louisa as a birth from his divine will. Louisa is already his daughter, so he enjoys, loves, and wants his goods in common with Louisa. Therefore, as the soul Louisa comes to possess, possess the supreme fiat, the first act of her God is to place his goods in common with Louisa. And centering his son in Louisa through the current of its light, he makes his goods descend into the soul, depth of the soul of Louisa. And Louisa takes whatever she wants. And through the same current of the divine light, Louisa uh, that Louisa possesses, Louisa makes them uh, uh, ascend again to her creator as the greatest homage of divine love and of divine gratitude. In the same current, makes them descend into Louisa once again. So these goods ascend and descend continuously as certain as the seal of the communion that exists between God and creature, Louisa. So what you're seeing is... What Adam lost has now been given back to Louisa. Why? Because of Jesus and Mary. Because of what Jesus and Mary have done. They have a newborn now. And so so this life of Jesus and Mary is found in Louisa. This is what Jesus and Mary did while on earth. And the the saints uh, are now asked by God to go to to possess more. Volume 22, excuse me, volume 22, July 21st, 1927. My daughter Louisa, how heavy you, Louisa, have become. Don't you know that oppression weighs down the soul? If I want to take you, Louisa, to my arms, I have to make an effort to lift you, Louisa. On the other hand, my holy divine will empties the weight of nature. It is light, light and light, removing the gloom of what is human and renders her light, light, and capable of any sacrifice, giving her the wings of love. Uh, it gives to the soul, Louisa, the first qualities of the celestial fatherland that n- knows neither oppression nor darkness, but daylight without sunset, and divine joy that never ends. 
Remember, Jesus says, I want to give you my joy so that your joy may be complete. This is this is what God has given to her. And all that God asks is in his generosity. He says, do you want to share with what do you want to possess what, what I have given to Louisa? Do you, do you want a share of what I've given to Louisa? And when we say yes, then God says, I give everything to you. Not just a particle, not just a, a sliver, but everything. So as you read this, and this is the, one of the mistakes that people make, as you read this, this is what God is going to do for you. Exactly what he did for Louisa, if he can see your fiat. If he sees your yes, then he can do this. If he doesn't see your yes, how can he give it to you? I mean, we, we have to prove to Jesus that we want this. That's why in the, in the religious life, it's discipline. You discipline yourself to get up to pray the bereavery. You discipline yourself to spend time for the blessed sacrament. You discipline yourself not to eat much. You discipline yourself to, uh, to uh, uh, be kind and generous. And then that discipline becomes your life. You're not just being forced to do it. You want to do it. So you pray whether you, you feel like it or not. You, you, you do what was required of you by your founder or foundress. And that, that's, God wants more than that. He wants more. And besides, would you, Louisa, say if you heard the son say, everything is over, I am no longer son because my creator does not constantly add more light for me? You, Louisa, I believe, would answer the son, I see you always, son, because you, your maker has taken nothing away from you of the light he gave you. At the most, if he kept adding light, you would have been stronger and more refulgent in your light. So do I answer you, Louisa? You are always son, because the son of my will and of my knowledge uh, and of, of the knowledge about it, more than light reigns in you, Louisa. So where, where do we find this knowledge of the divine will? Where do we find the truths of the divine will? It's in the writings that Jesus said about her. So when we, when we participate in her, what happens is we begin to live this life. It's like a Franciscan. If a Franciscan doesn't follow and participate in the life of Francis, how can he call himself a Franciscan? You take what Francis has and you make it yours. You, you dress like Francis. You shave your head like Francis. You uh, uh, live the life of Francis and you become a Franciscan. Now, you want the divine will? Go to the one who possessed it. It's Louisa. Again, he says it rains in you, Louisa. <clears throat> Neither I nor anyone else can snatch from you, Louisa, one single, uh, a single one of the many knowledges that you, Louisa, possess about my eternal fiat. Jesus says, once I give it to you, it's yours. I'm not taking it back. I can't take it from you. And it's the same thing for us. Once you know it, like I said, what, what, what do you know in volume 7 that you love? What truth can you say about volume 7 that you just, it's just, you love it so much that you, you know it? What truth in volume 21 is that you love so much you could say, this is what Jesus told Louisa and how beautiful this is. What, what, what in volume 33, what, what truth do you know? If, if you can't do that, we haven't studied it enough. Jesus says that the, this book of heaven, he says there are many books. He says, but this is the only book that will transform a soul. Now we have the Bible, which is the inspired word of God, and that, that, that transforms us. But any other book, what other book can transform us? Jesus says, it is this book, the book of heaven. So as you read it, people say to me, they get depressed, they get oppressed. Uh, they get discouraged, and then they read the divine will, and they're happy. I'm happy when I read it. <clears throat> I said, of course, because you're in heaven. You're possessing the kingdom. This is, this is, this is what God is doing. As you read these, these words, you become happy. 
it, you're, you're, no matter what you read, and that's the fun part, God is speaking to you in such a way that you're free, that you're happy, that you're peaceful. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> And, and only because I, Jesus, do not constantly add more about the divine will, as if I have told you, Louisa, were nothing, you, Louisa, say everything is over, as if the sun were extinguished in you, Louisa. It takes too much, my daughter, Louisa, to extinguish this sun of my will, nor will you, Louisa, yourself be able to escape its eternal rays that are that invading your soul, eclipse from you, Louisa, everything that does not belong to the sun. And that's what happens to us. Everything in us that is not of the divine will will be eliminated. Your worry, your fear, your anxiety, your complaints, your negativity, even your sin will be eliminated. This is, this is the astonishing thing. <clears throat> Therefore, follow its light and wait with patience for new light to come and be added so as to render the sun of my divine will more refulgent in you. 522. <clears throat> My divine will absorbs everything and makes the soul, Louisa, become all of God who wants to make of herself another son. Louisa, who is son, wants everyone to become son. It would not be something worthy of it to form little lights. It would go out of its nature. And you, Louisa, are there crying over the little lights and do not think that a divine son invests you, giving you, Louisa, Firmness and unshakability. <clears throat> That's the thing. If you want to be a Franciscan, you follow Francis. And you follow the rule. You follow the dress. Uh, you follow his writings. If you want the divine will, you live one with Jesus and Mary. And basically you read the book of heaven. And, and how glorious this is. Now, we're going to have Mass <clears throat> uh, and uh, in 15 minutes, so be there on time for the rosary. We will give you the red books, and I'll try to remember to tell you what page we're on for those that don't read Latin. And we'll give you a blue sheet, which will have all the English uh, parts of the Mass so that you can participate. And I'll basically tell you as we go along... Um, uh, where we are. Okay? okay? God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.